Okay, I think I've got the computer working. Screen is working, screen share, good. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. Uh, let's get into it. So we're gonna talk today about how to build a harmonious OCR training program, right? How do we build that program? Uh, I use the word harmonious, it's kind of a funny word to use when it talks about training programs, but um, I recently took a course, a healthy human course. They talked about what is the most important thing that you add in your life? And I said the word balance. And they said, instead of the word balance, because balance means we have to have, you know, everything kind of working um, to balance each other out. Why don't we think about the word harmonious, right? And how we can take multiple pieces and find harmony between them. And I thought it was a good word to use because training for obstacle course races is very similar in that way in that you have to have skill in so many different buckets to be successful in the sport. And I always say it's, it's similar to me uh, to the sport of CrossFit where you can be very skilled in one area, right? I'll say it's Olympic lifting and you can do that, but maybe you're not quick and nimble or you have gymnastic skills, but then your strength is lacking, right? So you have to have harmony between all of these different areas. And it's the same thing with obstacle course racing. You'll take a look on the screen here. Um, these symbols are going to make more sense in just a moment um, when we talk about, you know, uh, what are the different modalities that we need to focus on when training? So we're gonna talk about those modalities and then we'll talk about uh, how do we actually create the training program then while taking these things into consideration. And then at the end, if we have time, I'm gonna answer a few questions that I'm asked quite often um, from individuals that uh, have to do with obstacle course racing. So a little background about me, 2011 is when I uh, entered the OCR industry. I've been in the fitness industry about 15 years, but 2011 is when I entered the industry uh, back when Spartan Race still had knots in the ropes. You can see the left picture. They had knots in the ropes. They were placed over water uh, to the right. That's how they ended the, the races, right? Not so, of course, racing. They had the pugil sticks. The guys at the end who would just whack you with this giant stick to say congratulations for crossing the finish line. Um, so much fun. I've had success as a racer. I've had success as a coach. Um, I absolutely love being in this industry um, and helping out other racers who are looking to advance you know, in the industry or people who've never done it before and they're just looking to get in, you know, in, in the beginning. Uh, one of my jobs when I worked with Spartan Race was to help racers through in something called a sweet pea. Here's a picture of me helping Matt over the slip wall towards the end. Um, areas of education, kinesiology, personal training, CrossFit, the Spartan SGX and SOS is the uh, obstacle special certifications, USA weightlifting, mobility, uh, performance specialist, run methods. I absolutely love, love, love fitness. I love movement patterns. I love helping people progress from one uh, point to another. So um, that's a bit about me. Let's dive into uh, the training, guys. So let's take a look. The training modalities in OCR. We've got running, right? We've got strength elements. We've got grip. We need to focus on elevation. There's breath control and energy expenditure. And then the terrain. Um, all of these things are going to be those key pieces that we need to focus on when thinking about um, are we, you know, are we taking in these things into consideration throughout our training? Are we continuously trying to get better in these areas? So running. Right, we talk about running, we've got distances in our OCRs, 5K, 10K, half marathon, 50K. There's one mile sprint courses that have super heavy, um, obstacle heavy, um, you know, courses that are much shorter. But training for the running piece would be including something like interval training, fart like interval training, things that are going to increase your speed. And you also need to take into consideration the linear progression in distance that you're going to be covering in these races. On to strength elements, right? So our strength elements, you can see where they're used in the races, whether you're lifting, flipping, carrying, um, all of these things, all of these obstacles are gonna require some element of strength. What's cool about strength training, I'm moving my little picture over to the side so you can see in the lower right hand corner, right, the tire flip. Um, you know, taking a look at different strength training elements and understanding that, Strength training, like these things that we're doing in the race are just a combination of movement patterns, right? The flipping a tire is like a deadlift. You are hinging at the hip. It's a hinge motion, and then you're going to have to flip that tire over. So being able to break those uh, concepts down, the movement patterns down in training is going to be super, super important. And we'll dive into that in a little bit too. Next one, grip strength, which I think is probably number one, right? Number one 
Um, one of the most important, if you can't run, then you know, you're not going anywhere, but grip strength, the amount of time under tension, right? The amount of hanging that we do um, in the sport of obstacle course racing is pretty extreme. So grip strength is going to be uh, a very crucial part of all of your training. You can see the rope, uh, a couple different obstacles, there's savage race, there rings, uh, traverse walls, all of these things require grip strength, right? And grip strength can be uh, trained in a, a multitude of ways, but you got to figure out too, what kind of grip is necessary to complete the obstacle, right? Are we, are we strengthening a grip here? Are we strengthening our fingertips? Do we need a pinch grip? Like what areas can you, um, and think about the obstacles that you've performed in the past. You know, where do you have difficulties, right? Which ones are the ones that cause you, you know, the most difficulty? Elevation training. So I live in the Midwest. We don't have a lot of opportunities to train for the elevation here, but in our races, right, there's, it, there are mountains, right? And if they have the opportunity to send you up these hills and down these hills and deal with the elevation, they're going to absolutely do it. You know it, I know it. Um, they're going to do it. Uh, so being able to, uh, train for that elevation is a key point in your training program, whether it be for me, I have to do the, the bunny hill at our, our ski hill. I was born in uh, Portland, Oregon, and I skied Mount Hood my whole childhood. And so out here, it's like, that's not a mountain. That's like, it's a hill. <laughs> it's a, genuinely, it's a hill. Um, so we train on the hills here. You know, we can use stair climbers in the gym. We can do, you know, a couple of other, other options, but making sure that elevation training um, you're training for that incline. I'm going to take that into consideration. Next symbol, right? One that I feel is one of the most often overlooked pieces of training um, is going to be breath control, right? And energy expenditure. So when we talk about breath control, um, being able to calm down, being able to control our breathing while racing, while exercising, right? Sending oxygen to working muscles. Our muscles need oxygen to function. Right? And if we don't give them enough of it, then they can fatigue, right? You can get tired more quickly. So uh, an example of, you know, how do you train your, your breath control? It doesn't have to happen just in between bouts of exercise when you're trying to lower your heart rate and control your breathing, but throughout your day, right? You can do it throughout your day in something like as simple as a four square breathing exercise. So we'll do it together right now. If we inhale for four, do it with me, ready, go, inhale. Hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four. Okay, so a simple exercise just like that, right? Four square breathing throughout our day is gonna allow you to expand your diaphragm, to hold your breath, to train your body, to control your breathing, right? Next one funny little squiggly line. So agility, right? Agility is necessary and it's necessary to uh, focus on the terrain. That little squiggly line means terrain. And what we mean by terrain is just, you know, take a look at these pictures. Everything changes. You can have mud, you can go over logs, you can be, you know, navigating tough, technical, rocky terrain. All of these things are going to be very important. And so when we talk about training for terrain, we're talking about agility, we're talking about changing direction quickly. Um, we're also talking about ankle stability um, and the ability for, again, ankle uh, joint connective tissues to be able to withstand all of the different changes in directions. So anything that's promoting um, that ankle stability um, and or ankle strength is going to help with the terrain. So brain break. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, brain spinning around. So here are all the symbols that we took a look at. So this is, this is important here. So if you were to take a look at all of these symbols, right, can you pinpoint the areas in which you feel that you need to improve? Is it running? Are you focusing on interval training if you're looking to get faster, right? Are you increasing the distance that you cover over time, right? Strength training, is that incorporated into your uh, training program? Grip strength, are you focusing on it? You know, grip strength is something um, that can be uh, trained in an accessory day, and we'll talk about accessory days in a moment when we talk about putting a training program together. They're one of my favorite things to implement. Elevation training, is that a focus? Breath control and energy expenditure, are you focusing on your breathing just as much as you are focusing on the actual workout? Agility training, have you, um, you know, have you 
thrown that into your training. Put yourself in the woods, like focus on, you know, even the agility ladders, you know, break some things out that you may not have done in the past to put yourself in a position where you're, um, you're, you're practicing the movement patterns that would be necessary on course. Okay, and then this last one I actually didn't pull up. So that's a mindfulness um, circle, right? And that has to do more with, man, um, controlling your mind when it goes into like a fight or flight situation. Because you and I both know when you get on that course, you get super excited, adrenaline is rushing, you're on the course, you're in competition, you know, not necessarily with other people. Maybe you're not an elite racer, but you're in competition with yourself and your mind's going to go wild. So your ability to hone it in, right, and focus. Um, and then the other piece of the mindfulness is when you start to get tired, right? We start to have this inner cycle babble, at least I know I do. Um, you get this inner cycle babble that says quit. I was in Iceland um, when I was coaching Team Ari for the, the 24 hour world championship. I had an opportunity to run one lap. And it was crazy, crazy uh, weather there. It was 20 degrees, 40 plus mile an hour winds, every element you could think of. It's freezing rain and I had ski goggles on. I could barely see everything was frozen. I remember making it to the um, top of the ascent and I'm standing up there and I'm looking around and I'm like, I couldn't see, I couldn't feel my hands. It was the, the most that I have ever felt I wanted to quit in a race. Um, and it sucked, it sucked, that feeling sucked. Um, but being up there, you know, I, I had to uh, change my frame of mind. And that's, that's what we need to do, change my frame of mind to, hey, Sarah, like you can't feel anything, you're in pain, but take a second. like look around what do you really have to worry about right now you're in iceland beautiful oh my gosh you're in iceland running a spartan race at the top of the mountain challenging yourself having a great time like stop thinking about all the negative things because it's easy to think about those things and shift to focusing on what is positive right now right nothing to worry about keep going uh, and it works right it works so i know it's possible but that's what that symbol means right mindfulness is a huge huge piece and that's also something that we focus on when we create this harmonious training plan. So let's take a look then uh, about this training program and how do we put something together? So this is um, a PDF of weeks one through four of a program that I have um, written called Cruise the Course. It's actually a 13 week cyclical program, um, which just means we can repeat it, right? And continuously see improvement. It's super awesome. Um, the, Numbers that you see here pertain to the Cruise the Course actual like workbook that has workouts. It's a book that has 50 workouts um, to choose from, and they all have targeted focuses uh, for OCR. So day one of the training program, you're focused on fitness tests, right? Measurable change is incredibly important when building any type of training program. We want to see improvement. Otherwise, you go a few weeks and you're like, I think I got better at eh, fill in the blank. But you don't have the actual numbers. So we take fitness tests in the beginning, everything from a one-mile run to hang time to test grip strength, the hand transfers if we're there, right? We do a plank hold, uh, burpee test out. So focusing on everything, you know, cardio, uh, cardiovascular, uh, endurance, strength and endurance, core strength, um, all of those things are tested, right, grip strength. Um, so we get those tests right out of the gate. And then throughout the week, we focus on, again, those symbols that we saw Tuesday and Thursday, you see in this first week, number two and 11, those are workouts, again, from the Cruise the Course book. Um, those are our strength training days. Wednesday, we have a cardio conditioning day. You'll see cardio conditioning days um, spread throughout this program, uh, you'll see also that on those cardio conditioning days, it talks about zones. So we've got um, different zone training. Um, there is a plan. There's a reason why they are specific zones and for different time periods throughout uh, this program. So you'll also notice though in the cardio conditioning days, and this is what I was talking about with accessory work. Um, let me see if I can get my little mouse guy to start working because I'm going to need to show you in a second. What do I mean by accessory days? So accessory days are those days when you focus on a specific skill um, that you need to work on. So that specific skill though could be like you want to work on, yeah, cool, I can pull it up. So you want to work on the rope climb, okay? So the obstacles, the rope climb, your options for that accessory day then would be to perform, let's say number one, three rounds of max windshield wipers, bent over rows, negative pull-ups. Well, Sarah, that's an actual workout. Yes, but the workout, the accessory work that you're doing is gonna strengthen the movement patterns. The movement patterns necessary to actually 
perform the rope climb in the future, right? So windshield wipers, I want you to picture, picture climbing rope first. We reach up, we grab the rope, what's the next thing that happens? We have to crunch with our core, tucking our knees in, and most likely they're kind of angled where we can get either a J-hook, an S-hook, you know, depending on how you climb your rope. Um, and then we have to reset and do it again. So that max windshield wiper, windshield wipers are literally where we're drawing our knees in and we're turning and we're turning and we're turning, right? So all of these movements that you're performing on your accessory day are focused on strengthening a specific area of weakness in your training. And only you know what you need to work on. You can see on the right, monkey bars are gonna be, um, you know, another one. So the bar hang, and then you go into, let me see, yeah, hand transfers and things like that. So you can see, you can see how it works. The accessory days are my favorite day. Uh, it could be anything too, right? It could be mobility practices. Maybe you need to focus on um, whatever it may be, you know, bear crawls because you need to get lower in the barbed wire because you cut your butt last time. <laughs> I don't know, but that's what your accessory days are. So you'll take a look Saturday on the first week is hill repeat. So we're focusing on that elevation, right? Everything has a targeted focus. Sunday, I made it easy here picking one day a week and just threw it in on Sunday um, for your recovery. There's that mindful symbol, yoga, mobility, food prep, right? So yoga is going to help with um, mobility and being able to stretch your muscles to a full range of motion. Um, I love yoga. I recently just got my yoga teacher training certification too. And it's just, it's one of the, I'd say one of the most important things to add into a training program as well. Uh, with the mobility piece, food prep, right? Nutrition. If your body, just fly, sorry. If you're not fueling your body correctly, it's not going to perform. Um, so back to the actual programming though, you can pick your recovery day, right? Listen to your bodies when it comes to programming what days work for you and don't beat yourself up if you need to add a recovery day because you're, you recover, right? Here's my little recovery hand. I'm recovering, recovering, recovering. And then we work hard and we dip. And then I want to recover, right? But then I work hard and I dip more. And boom, I didn't recover. And then we're going to bottom, right? Bottom out at some point in time. So you want to make sure that recovery is a key focus um, in your training program. You'll also notice, you can't really see it, and I can't move my little, uh, I don't know why I can't see my mouse to move my picture over. Oh, 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 there we go, in the bottom left-hand corner. Actually, I think there's two of them. Okay, so right in the middle, in the bottom left-hand corner, you've got 30 minutes of running at a consistent pace, so that's where we focus on our linear progression and the amount or distance that we're able to cover, right? So 30 minutes of running for somebody, you know, who is uh, running a 10-minute pace, right, um, getting into, just getting into this, right? They're running a 10 minute pace, 30 minutes, they're covering three miles, right? We can do the math. Eventually it's gonna be 35 minutes of consistent running, which means they're running a longer distance. Then it's 40, then it's 45. So I use time in this so that it can be subjective. You make it your own. If you are someone who is more advanced than 30 minutes of running, you're like, Sarah, I run three miles all the time. And you wanted your 30 minutes is 60 minutes. That's fine. You know, make these things your own. I just put it out there, right? And you know where you're at. So it would be 60, it'd be 60, it'd be 65, it'd be 70, right? We start to create this linear progression through our training program through these weeks. Again, this is week one through four of Cruise the Course program. This program, by the way, if you end up picking up a copy of the Cruise the Course book ever, right? You'll get a copy, a PDF copy of this training program that you can follow. Again, it's cyclical. Everything is cyclical. So when you, I'll touch on that too. Let's see what's next here. Yeah. So here's the book that I'm talking about. When you actually perform these workouts, you can write down your times. Measurable change, super important. Write your times down. And then you'll revisit the workout when you revisit it in the cyclical training program. And you'll see that you will, you will have progress, right? You will increase your speeds, you will increase your times, you will feel stronger, you'll feel better. So um, there's also a movement glossary. If you don't know how to perform movements, um, feel free to take a look in the back of it. They're all QR codes that lead to videos. I was in force preserves, random force preserves for like almost two years straight recording all these little videos. So um, let me see what I've got there. I hope that that all made sense and you were able to, to pull from it. So the main thing, when creating a harmonious training program is to take a look 
and be honest with yourself about where your weaknesses are, right? Look for those things, hunt them down. The, the purpose is to, uh, if you make yourself aware of them, right, we can get a little bit better each day. And that's what counts. If you're 1% closer each day, then you eventually will get to your goal. You'll get faster. You'll be more successful at your races. You guys are doing, I'm sure, fantastic already. You know, having a really well-rounded training program is only going to enhance things. So um, I hope you were able to gain something out of that. If you're still with me, thank you so much for being here. A few questions, and I want to just bring this up, a few questions that I usually get. Um, you know, people talk about grip strength. They talk about um, injury prevention, everything else. So how do you advance your grip strength? Um, I always have people start with, bar hangs, right? There's always a proper progression to everything. You would start with a bar hang, right? So creating solid engagement in the shoulder, attract, press, boom, locked on a bar, and we're hanging, right? You see a lot of these bar hang kind of work hanging. So this is stage one, okay? Again, proper progression. Stage two then would be to do hand transfer. So we're pulling into the bar with one hand, we're releasing with the other, then we pull into the bar, we release, then we're going back and forth. So once we get the body used to this movement pattern, then we can start maybe moving forward, tapping, moving forward, tapping, releasing one hand. Maybe we go outside, outside, inside, inside, right? So we're creating uh, difficulty and instability there. Um, I say that and I bring up the grip strength. I bring up, you know, shoulder strength because I was having a conversation with a buddy who he was a medic for Spartan Race um, for years and years and years. And I asked him, what are... The, the most common injuries. I was curious because I want to try and help people prevent those things. And he said shoulders and ankles, right? Shoulders make sense totally. When are, we, when are we hanging all over the place throughout our day? I don't know anybody who does this all day or <laughs> hanging from things, but man, we don't do it. So then we go and we hop on bars and we try and swing and we're hanging and doing all this stuff. It's dangerous for the shoulder, it is. So we got to focus on strengthening, right? Um, the shoulder, because you can see. The other one, though, ankles, was not actually from the terrain, which I found interesting because I'm used to, you know, having that be um, uh, why someone would roll their ankle. It's actually coming off of obstacles. He said when people are coming down off of the obstacles, they're not able to catch themselves. So it's not, uh, it's not the terrain. It's the lack of ability to slowly lower themselves off of an obstacle and then catch their body weight. So how do we, how do we, um, you know, elim not eliminate that, but how do we make it so that maybe that doesn't happen in the future? We practice on strengthening the movement patterns, right? We get up on the wall, we're coming over the wall. What do we need to do? We need to lower ourselves down. So jumping negative pull-ups, we jump up to a pull-up bar, we pull it to here, and we slowly lower ourselves down, right? Jump again, reset, slowly lower ourselves down. So we're training the movement pattern necessary right, to strengthen our bodies so that we are safe. When we land to the ground, we are decelerating, right? We are catching ourselves, right? So we do plyo work, which means loaded work. We are jumping like a loaded plyo saw. We jump and then we catch our body weight softly. We jump and we catch our body weight softly. So it's the deceleration and the ability to control our body weight. Those types of things and thinking in that way are going to keep you safer on course. So that's, that's one question. And we have got, I think we're like, I don't even know how long this video is now. I don't want to keep you here too much longer. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Again, my name is Sarah Postal. I'm the founder of OCRtraining.com. You can reach me through the OCRtraining.com webpage or email me directly. If you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate. I hope you guys learned something out of this video and we'll talk soon. Thanks.